Fellow comic book collectors, welcome back to Comic Casper. Now, the other day I took some time to talk about my top 10 comic book series of 2022. The ones that I read, that is. And by the way, thank you for listening. Now, today I want to talk about my top 10 collected edition reads of 2022, not necessarily releases. And I say reads because I have a huge, huge back catalog of comic books that I have to get through. So please bear with me. All right, let's get started. Let's talk about those top 10 collected editions that I enjoyed in 2022. Alright, number 10 goes to Gideon Falls by Jeff Lemire and Andrea Sorrentino. Now, this definitely gives me some vibes of Twin Peaks. If you guys haven't read this before or maybe seen Twin Peaks, then it's gonna be very difficult for me to actually describe what it's about. But it's best to go into this blind. The beauty of this is just being surprised how freaky, how interesting, how inventive this book is. I very much enjoyed this from start to finish. Obviously, this is book one. There are two books to get through. I'm actually waiting for my second book to arrive, so gonna be looking forward to reading that one. But I very much enjoyed this for its strangeness, for its creepiness, for the level of curiosity that it sparked in me. I thought that the artwork was very interesting in the sense that it got very creative with what it did with the panels, how it told the story. It actually surprised me how imaginative it was and impactful when it came to delivering on horror themes in a comic book format. It will be interesting to see if this can actually translate into a TV show because I did hear that a TV show was in the works with I think James Wan directing it. All in all, I very much enjoyed this and I am looking forward to how this is going to wrap up. Number nine is going to go to The Boys Omnibus Volume 1 by Garth Ennis. Man, was this an interesting and fun ride. It definitely has a lot of major differences compared to the TV show. Some are good, some are maybe not so good, but all in all, it's actually a really fun read. I found that the characters in the TV show were very similar to that in the book, apart from actually Dewey, our main character in here. Is it Dewey? Dewey. Huey? Huey. Huey, Louie, and Dewey. Huey. Yes. Huey. I found that the character of Huey was very different in the comic books compared to the TV show. He's super Scottish in here, by the way. The thing about the boys' omnibus is that it's probably 10, if not like 20 times more crass than the TV show. It does not shy away from violence, from crude humor, some crazy sexual antics, but it's definitely a fun ride. I don't think it's for everybody, but if you can take it on board in a lighthearted manner, then I think you're gonna have a lot of fun. You're gonna really enjoy this. If I I would have to say whether one is better than the other between the TV show and the omnibus, it would be a very difficult decision to make because they're just so different in certain aspects. I would have to praise the comic book in some and then I would have to praise the TV show in others. Overall, I would say I have a lot of love and respect for both. Very much loved it and I'm looking forward to volume two and volume three. House of X and Powers of X comes in at number eight by Jonathan Hickman. This was excellent. Now, I took a like a huge hiatus from reading X-Men. I actually don't have that much experience with the X-Men as is, but having experienced this, I gotta say, this was a pretty sweet retcon. This was a really great story. I found the depiction of the characters and some of the modernization of the characters was fantastic. It was unique. It was heavy on the sci-fi. It had a lot of twists and turns and surprises. It had some wonderful foreshadowing. It prompted you to be a very conscious reader, you know, you needed to really think about what you were digesting. This was excellent. I sort of wish that this level of quality would have translated into the X-Men Omnibus by Jonathan Hickman. Don't get me wrong, it wasn't bad, it's just I feel that this was a lot more superior in its quality. It was a lot more ambitious, it was a lot more complex, and it was a lot more rewarding as well. But that's just my take on it. Number 7 goes to a 1-2 combo combination of the Daredevil Deluxe Hardcover Editions by Chip Zdarsky and Marco Kekido. These were absolutely dynamite and if I happened to have the third volume, I would probably have included it here as well. I'm, a, I'm still actually waiting for that, so please hurry up, Postman. These were wonderful. These were an absolutely magic way to introduce me into the character of Daredevil. I never really took the time to read Daredevil in the past until I got into this bad boy. The artwork was gorgeous. 
the types of situations that Matt Murdock was placed into was fantastic, extremely suspenseful. Like I actually had fears and concerns for Matt Murdock and the supporting cast when I was reading this. I felt like that the stakes were genuinely high in this. I had an absolute blast from start to finish and I really couldn't wait until the next hardcover was printed. So we got the third one that's out at the moment and I think the fourth one is coming out mid next year. So I'm a little bit behind on the story. I do have the latest issues from the new ongoing volume, also by the team of Chip Zdarsky and Marco Kekero. I've been just waiting for the hardcover to come out so that I can enjoy it in this oversized format because Marco Kekero's artwork hits on all the right notes and it's just an absolute pleasure and privilege to see these stories in an oversized format. So number six also goes to a one-two combination of the trade paperbacks of John Constantine volume one and two. This is by Simon Spurrier. I had an absolute joy reading these. They were a wonderful representation of the character. I really got to see John Constantine distilled into his finest form in these two trade paperbacks. They consist of 12 issues in total with six issues in each of the trade paperbacks. It would be nice to actually have it in some sort of a oversized hardcover format, but I really doubt it. I believe that the series was canceled from what I have heard because it wasn't doing so well in the sales, which is an absolute shame because the story is just excellent. It's absolutely fantastic. It had all the things that you would expect from a John Constantine story. It had a lot of horror elements. It had a lot of demonic imagery. It had a lot of fantasy that was very fitting into the realm of John Constantine, our hellblazer. I probably as many other people would wish that this series would come back. Now, obviously, that is not going to happen, but if there were any writer that could actually match Simon Spurrier's magic that we have in these two volumes, I would be extremely grateful. I would love for DC to bring this character back, and I think now is the best time, especially with the movie coming around the corner, I think DC should do something. For John Constantine Hellblazer just to be sitting on the sidelines is an absolute crime. This was a blast to read through. It had a lot of dark comedy in in there as well. It had some great cynicism and levity. It was a little bit dramatic and dreadful as well. I think in all the right places. Let's do it DC. Let's bring back John Constantine once again. Once in future the deluxe edition book one goes to number five. Now this is by Karen Gillan and Dan Mora. These guys together. Holy smokes. Now I wasn't very familiar with the Dan Mora artwork until I started reading this. Yeah. Okay. This guy is crazy good. Good. His artwork is wonderful, his inking is on point, and this was a, just an excellent story to experience as well. The way that I would describe it is like a group of delinquents that are fighting against the forces of evil that stem from King Arthur. Just think about each and every single key character that existed in like the medieval times. You know, you can probably expect these legends to show up in this book. This is extremely fun and adventurous. It is just the artwork is just bombastic. It's explosive. It's excellent. Dan Mora is an absolute gem in the comic book industry. Like experiencing the artwork in an oversized format like this is just excellent. And I think the build quality of this book is pretty great as well. Now I'm not that familiar with Boom Studios. So this is one of the first collected editions that I got to experience from them. I'm also looking to eventually getting the time to read Something is Killing the Children also in this type of format. But this was great. This was great. I'm looking forward to book two. I believe there's only enough material for two books. This is one hell of a wild ride from start to finish. This was a page turner. It was very quick to get through, I think because it has a lot of excellent action sequences. It's not weighed down by too much dialogue. This would have definitely taken a higher spot if it wasn't for some of the other excellent books that I got to experience this year. So anyway, number five, Once in Future Book One. Okay, this one's a bit of a big one. This is Batman Omnibus by Scott Snyder and Greg Capullo, Volume One. This was just excellent. Oh God, this is so heavy. I'm just going to put it down here. Greg Capullo's artwork is absolutely dynamite and the fact that we've got Scott Snyder behind the reins of the story, this was just so good. I didn't experience the Court of Owls until I read this omnibus and I gotta say, wow, what a hell of a great story. I never thought I would get surprised reading Batman 
and like I did with this volume. You know, it had some wonderful twists and turns. It got me to see Gotham in a completely new light. Loved how some of these elements were weaved into this so carefully, so intricately. I wish I could just forget it so I could read it again. It's just absolute magic. I would have to say that the first story arc is probably the strongest out of this. Just the Court of Owls is just excellent. You know, the book really hits the ground running. Don't get me wrong, all the other stories are wonderful too. Really enjoyed the depiction of some of the pre-existing villains that we got in here. Also the introduction of new ones too. I would have loved to be that fly on the wall as part of his creative process. You know, how he came across all of this as well. Number three is going to The Amazing Spider-Man by J. Michael Straczynski, volume one. Now, if I were to describe this omnibus with one word, I would say it would be fun. From start to finish, this was just an absolute joy. It did have a lot of heartfelt moments. It had a lot of emotion. It had a lot of impactful action. Had some beautiful artwork going through this. We got the John Romita Jr. classic artwork. I actually surprised myself at putting this at number three because I was tossing between Batman and this. And the reason that this got a higher spot was because I felt that this had a lot of relationship building and maybe just of just a few more heartfelt moments that really stood out to me. It had this brilliant balance of drama and humor and action, just playfulness. And there were just some moments that just absolutely put a smile on my face. There were even some moments that made me laugh out loud because of just how like bizarre or how quirky or just how imaginative some of the humor was. We had a lot of cameos in here and there were good cameos as well. They were used with purpose. They really embodied the characters themselves. They weren't just, you know, empty throw-ins. They felt like they were there at the right time for the right purpose. This was just a really fun ride that got me distracted from all the other material that I was reading. A dose of joy and adventure. It was a blast. Number two has got to go to Captain America by Ed Brubaker, volume one. Now, I'm a huge sucker for anything Ed Brubaker and this is no exception. This was just dynamite from start to finish. It was very suspenseful. It was intelligently written. It made every single character in this matter. It had some surprises, some epic plot twists. I kind of wish that I read this before I saw the movies and I also wish that I read this without actually having some of the key elements spoiled but it is just so good from start to finish. Each and every single issue was just thrilling. There was some really intense and emotional dramatic moments in here. I actually felt really sorry for some of these characters and it felt like each and every single character that was introduced here was fleshed out so well. I actually felt something for these characters. They weren't just, you know, caricatures. They weren't just like cannon fodder. They weren't just empty additions into the comic book universe. No, they each served a purpose and they had very meaningful interactions with one another. I was actually just really enjoying the conversation between the characters. I could have just sat there in the background and just paid attention to the conversations. You know, it wasn't so much about the action as it was about the relationship building, just about the playfulness between the characters. But it was also about this meticulous and slow burn and build up of sinister intentions in the background and it threw us between the history and the present and the way that it did that was excellent. We got a deeper look into the past of Captain America and also his partner Bucky Barnes. It was just so, so, so good that now whenever I look at Captain America, I think to myself, will I ever have a Captain America that's written as good as this one was? I get this sad sinking feeling that maybe we just won't. I'm still happy that I have the other volumes to experience. So I've got something to look forward to in the meantime. Number one was an absolute no-brainer for me and that's the Thor by Jason Aaron, Omnibus, Volume 1. The second that I finished reading this earlier this year, I just knew that this was gonna be my favorite read of 2022. Gosh, where do I even start with this? Okay, first of all, I would have to give a lot of credit to Jason Aaron for his ability to weave the past, the present, and the future so seamlessly together. It's as if they always were there in a sense. It was just an absolute genius with how he just orchestrated, especially in the first arc with Gore the God Butcher. I know that the movie Thor Love and Thunder was loosely based on this, which was an absolute travesty and it was like the biggest disrespect to 
this masterpiece. When I read that first arc, which consists of 12 or 13 issues, I think, I was so blown away. I thought, wow, okay, where on earth do we go now? There is no possible way that the following story can even come close to that first arc. And boy, was I wrong. And I'm so happy to be wrong. And it kept on building up on something even bigger over time. And I thought, ooh, okay, he's actually going in for the long game here with something extremely exciting that's going to involve a lot of players and that's going to lead to a massive Marvel event, which I'm still to get to, by the way. I think I need to read volume two and then I think it leads to War of the Realms. Is that right? Man, just everything was perfect about this volume. The artwork was excellent. I think it complemented the storytelling really, really well. It was dynamic. It was beautiful. It was well inked. It really gave me the sense that I was reading something so epic with the legends of the gods. And I have high hopes that volume two is going to be just as good as this one. I had no idea how much love and brain power went into this by Jason Aaron. And I am so sorry that he had to deal with like the crappiest Marvel movie of all time that had to somehow represent this masterpiece. This was great, 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 great. When the time comes, I'm really looking forward to rereading this. This was my top pick of the collected editions of 2022 of the ones that I actually managed to experience this year anyway. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen to me ramble. And with that in mind, I would love to hear what you guys think about some of the collected editions that you might have experienced in the year 2022. Please let me know in the comments below. And if you did enjoy this video, hit it with a like. And if you absolutely hated it, hit it with a dislike. Looking forward to giving you guys some more comic book content. Always looking forward to talking all things comics. Take care of yourselves. And until next time, bye bye.